six, which is equal to twelve. Yesterday class, we completed up to the expression for the radius of energy. Zero of nine energy. electron volts. Okay, remaining things we will discuss now. When the electron falls from the excited state to its ground state. It emits a photon whose energy is equal to the energy difference between the excited state and the ground state. For example, if the electron comes to its ground state from the first excited state, the energy difference will be e2 minus it corresponds to an energy of n equal to infinity, which is the highest energy state. This is the energy when the electron is completely removed from the atom and is at rest. The light spectra of the hydrogen atom was explained by the third postulate of Niels Bohr. We know that when an electron in a lower energy level with principal quantum number n1 absorbs energy from a photon, it jumps to a higher energy level such that the photon energy will be equal to E2 minus E1, where E2 is the energy of the level corresponding to N2 and E1 is the energy corresponding to N1. Similarly, when an atom jumps from a higher energy level E2 to a lower energy level with energy E1, a photon is released with the frequency nu, such that H nu is equal to E2 minus E1. Let this be equation 1. We have seen from Bohr's postulates that the energy En of any level corresponding to a principal quantum number n is given as En equal to minus m e to the power 4 by 8 n square epsilon naught square h square. Now using the result of equation 2 for N1, the energy E1 is equal to minus m e power 4 by 8 N1 square epsilon naught square or N2. Let this be equation 8 square into 1 by N1 square minus 1 by N2 square. This equation is called Rydberg's formula. Let this be equation 5. From equation 5, please note it, my everyone. Ribbert formula at new it is equal to m e power 4 by epsilon r square h square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. So this is Ribbert formula. H new means energy photon. Please take a notes. Nu is equal to m e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square h cube into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. Let this be equation 6. Substituting n1 is equal to 2 and n2 is equal to 3 in equation 6, we get nu is equal to m e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square h cube into 1 by 2 square minus 1 from equation 6 comparing new with the empirical formula for Balmer series that you have learnt earlier we get new is equal to RC into 1 by 2 square minus 1 by n square hence we see that the value of R or the Rydberg's constant is equal to m into e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square h cube c. 
substituting the values of mass of the electron m charge on the electron a permittivity of free space epsilon naught Planck's constant h and speed of light c we get r is equal to 1.03 into 10 to the power minus 7 per meter this value of r ribbuck value r equal to 1.03 into 10 power minus 7 meter inverse one more question r is very close to 1.097 into 10 to the power minus 7 per meter which is obtained from the empirical formula of Bama. This agreement between the theoretical and experimental values of Rydberg's constant provided a direct and striking confirmation of the Bohr's model of the atom. So, when we substitute N1 is equal to 2 and N2 is equal to 3, 4, 5 and so on, we get the Bama series. Similarly, when we take N1 is equal to 1 and N2 is equal to 2, 3, 4 and so on, we get the Lyman series. When N1 is equal to 3 and N2 is equal to 4, 5, 6 and so on, we get the Paschen series. When N1 is equal to 4, and N2 is equal to 5, 6, 7, and so on, we get the bracket series. Thus, if photons having a continuous range of frequencies pass through a rarefied gas and then are analyzed with the spectrometer, a series of dark spectral absorption lines appear in the continuous spectrum. These dark lines indicate the frequencies that have been absorbed by the atoms of the gas from the incident photons. Thus, Bohr's model was successful in explaining the hydrogen atom spectra. But Bohr's second postulate was a puzzle for 10 years, till Louis D. Broglie explained it in 1923. Until then, no one could explain why the angular momentum should be an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. We have learned from Davison Germer's experiment that material particles like electrons, protons, neutrons, etc., possess a wave nature, which was actually proposed by de Broglie. Let us now understand how de Broglie explained Bohr's second postulate. When a string is plucked, a large number of wavelengths are produced, but only those wavelengths survive, which have nodes at the ends and form standing waves along the string. Thus, Standing waves are formed only when the total distance travelled by the wave in a to and fro direction is equal to one wavelength, two wavelengths or any integral number of wavelengths. Now, let us apply this concept to an electron in the nth circular orbit of radius Rn. The total distance travelled by the electron is 2 pi Rn. Hence, 2 pi Rn is equal to n lambda, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. Let this be equation 7. We know that de Broglie's wavelength corresponding to the motion of a particle having a momentum p is given by lambda is equal to h by p. Here, h is the Planck's constant and p is its momentum. As momentum is the product of the mass m and the velocity v, we have lambda is equal to h by m v n. Here, v n is the velocity of the electron in the nth orbit. 
substituting the value of lambda in equation 7. We have 2 pi Rn is equal to Nh by Mvn. Rearranging the equation, we get Mvn Rn is equal to Nh by 2 pi. Let this be equation 8. Thus, the angular momentum of an electron is quantized. The quantized electron orbits and energies are due to the wave nature of the electron. Equation 8 is nothing but Bohr's second postulate. In spite of the amazing results of Bohr's model, it had some drawbacks. Bohr what is done everyone? This one, the line spectra and the de Broglie explanation for the quantum chasing. That is the Bohr second postulate it is uh, explained by the de Broglie. Bohr's model could be applied only to hydrogen-like atoms. That is, the atoms having only one electron, like singly ionized helium, doubly ionized lithium, etc. It could not explain the spectrum of atoms with more than one electron. Bohr's model included only the electric force between the electron and nucleus. But it did not take into consideration the electric forces between electrons in multi-electron atoms. Though the frequency of spectral lines was correctly predicted by Bohr's model, some frequencies are relatively more intense than the others. Bohr's model could not explain this fact. Thus, the atomic model of multi-electron atoms can be better understood by applying a new theory called the quantum theory. The lines was correctly predicted by Bohr's model. Some frequencies are relatively more intense than the others. Bohr's model could not explain this fact. Thus, the Please take a note, Ma. The Bohr model could not explain it. That is the drawbacks of Bohr's model. Bohr's always hydrogen atom. Till now, we are discussing Bohr's hydrogen atom only. You know? So, he explained only for the one atom, but also one electron. The Bohr model did not consider the electric force for the multi-electron atom. Next one, the spectral frequency also he didn't explain properly. So this is the drawbacks of Bohr model of hydrogen atom. Please note it, everyone. Kindly take a notes. Take a screenshot. Okay, chapter number 12, Atoms, Introduction Part, next, uh, the Rutherford model of, that is in a, a Rutherford model. Next, uh, the Alpha particle trajectory, the electron orbit, atomic spectra, spectral series, the Bohr model of hydrogen atom and the drawbacks also now we discussed it. Like the Bohr parcelates, the derivation part also, last class I explained.
energy levels that are e n formula the line spectra of hydrogen atom the de broglie explanation of both second pass let now we discussed it. okay that's all ma so chapter number 12 we completed so upcoming class we will discuss the problem okay if you have any doubt you can ask chapter number 12 okay now we go for the problem section okay first one the calculate the radius of the first bore orbit from given data and hence the find the radius of third orbit wait a minute i will take a pen please everyone note it first problem yes you want to copy this sums in class work monday onwards i will check your class work also and upcoming week test portion chapter number 12 So calculate the radius of first bore orbit from the given data. Hence, find the radius of third orbit. So given data, m value, e value, h value, epsilon naught. And the first orbit means that is the form n one n value is one. Bose radius formula, R naught formula, we said no, that only R. So R equal to h square epsilon naught pi m e square. This is the formula. So in this lesson, very important task you want to remember all the formulas. That is square and all. Sometimes square will come, sometimes four will come, three, everything. So formula is very important. Then you can apply the values. See that all the data also are given. Only you want to know formula. You know the formula means easy to apply the values and finding the answer. Then R one, it is equal to. It is R one value also you know very well. Zero point five three Armstrong. It is also constant. And the relation, so R is directly proportional to n square. Okay, R uh, R n equal to R one into n square. This is the formula. Now R cube. They said no. See that. Find the radius of third orbit. So third orbit means that is the R three. So R three equal to R one n square. So n square three square just r one multiple you will get the radius r three r three value four point eight three seven this formula is very important r n equal to r one n square always r one value is constant zero point five three ten power Minus ten, otherwise Armstrong. And R, again they will say the third orbit, fourth orbit, fifth orbit. Make a square, find the answer. That's all. Okay, this is important. Please note it. Okay, next to problem. Second one. The energy of the exited hydrogen atom is uh, minus three point four electric volt. Find the angular momentum of the electron. You want to find the angular momentum. So this is the E n value.
So en equal to minus 13.6 divided by n square ev. Now en value minus 3.4 and finding the value of en, it is 2. Okay, related to angular momentum. So angular momentum L equal to n h divided by 2 pi. So n value 2, h by 2 pi. h value is the Planck constant, pi is the 3.14. Just to apply the values, you will get angular momentum L equal to 2.11 into 10 power minus 34 joule second. So this is the SI unit. Not it. Second one. Completed. Uh. So we'll go for next third sum. Okay. The energy of an electron in second bore orbit is minus three point four electric volt. Find the energy of electron in third orbit, uh, bore orbit, and the first bore orbit. So you want to find the energy of E1 and E3. Already you know the value, but this is a, a method you can solve. En is inversely proportional to square of the n. It is the number of orbit. And E2 also same, E3 also same. Taking a ratio E3 divided by E2. 2 square divided by 3 square, 4 by 9. We want to find E3 value. So E3 equal to 4 by 9 into E2. Up to that, please note it. Everyone taking notes or not? Asiba, Garnitharan, Gokul Ram, Harini, Arsini Rajasri, Hamvarshan, Manisha, Navantika, Navin Raj, Prabha, Pranav, Praveen, Okay, so, so just applying the values, you will get E3, energy level 3, and E1 also same method. You can find the E1 equal to minus 13.6 electric volt. Already know the values, but this is the method to find the E1, E2, E3, all the values. In case I know the values, sir, you can write directly also, but you want to write the formula. After the formula, apply the values and find the final equation. What is the value? Okay. Fourth problem. It is also related to same, but you want to find the total energy. The energy of electron in second orbit, uh, minus 3.4 electric volt, calculate the kinetic energy and the potential energy in the third orbit. We should find kinetic energy and the potential energy. Okay. So E2 value, this one. And uh, 
So this is the comparison with the E3 value. Uh, E3 value minus 1.5 minus 1.51 electric volt total value. So kinetic energy, the total energy is the X we should take like that. And the kinetic energy is X. So potential energy minus 2X. Yeah, one minute. Total energy minus X. It is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. So kinetic energy also considered to X. So minus X in this side means you will get potential energy equal to minus 2X. So it is so that the kinetic energy, it is equal to the minus of total energy. Kinetic energy is equal to the minus of total energy. That formula also there. You can check the formula. Then you will get the idea. So kinetic energy is equal to the minus of total energy. So total energy minus 1.51 minus into minus plus. So this is the total energy. And the multiple with the 2, you will get the potential energy also. Minus 3.02 electric volt. So this is also one of the important problem. Maximum in this lesson, they will ask uh, related to energy orbit, Bohr orbit, uh, next to energy level, total energy, kinetic energy. And the ball materials, line materials. In this area, problem will come. Okay, take a note. <clears throat> okay, fifth sum for you homework. So this is the data. <coughs> Find the answer and tell me tomorrow. Fifth to some for you homework. Please note it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can we meet next class. Thank you.